The name's Sherlock Holmes and the address is 221B Baker Street. This is the Sherlock Rewatch. If you don't know what this is, this is something I'm doing on my channel where I review each episode of Sherlock, each six, and I'm going to be reviewing A Study in Pink, as you saw in the title. A Study in Pink was written by Stephen Moffat, directed by Paul McGuigan, produced by Sue Virtue, and came out on July 25th, 2010. Alright, so in the story section of my reviews, I'll be covering what happens in the actual story of the episode and how good it's paced, or like how it's edited, how it all comes together as a whole. So I'm going to go through scene by scene in order of the episode, and let's start with the opening sequence where we meet the character of John Watson. Um, I really like this opening because it immediately got my attention with the war scene. It was this nightmare. We didn't know what was going on. When I remember when I first watched it and I had my headphones on, I was like, whoa, wait, what? what's with the war scene? Did I click on the right show? It got me intrigued immediately by showing off the character that we are going to be un more understanding with because... John Watson, with his post-traumatic stress disorder, we still relate to him because he's not like Sherlock who knows everything. But for the story-wise, I thought it was a great way to start off with John Watson and then meet Sherlock later. We got a prelude to the mystery. We saw um, what was happening, that these people are committing suicide, but they could, that they're all connected. And I think that was a really cool thing to do because it let us know this is a mystery show. This is going to be the cases. Now, Sherlock was introduced perfectly, like, because it's funny how Mike references him at the park. This is who Sherlock Holmes is, a striking detective who doesn't, who has no, like, moral limits, who's like, where's my riding crop? And then our introduction to this character is him bruising a dead body. Now what I like about the story and how it's written is that there's a lot of references to the actual book that it's based off of a study in Scarlet. Um, Sherlock's deductions about um, John Watson's brother, sister in the show. Now to the mystery of the show, I really like the mystery because like I said earlier with the um, opening prelude to the mystery, it is very mysterious. We have no clue what's going on, um, Why? how are these suicides connected, and what I like about this episode is we learn what's going on with Sherlock. Um, during his deduction of Jennifer Wilson on the floor, we see um, with the text on the screen, like, that, like what he's thinking, like, in with Sherlock on the ride. What this episode does is really introduce us to what this world is going to be, like a first episode of a show should. We get this scene with Mycroft and John, and I think it's a really interesting scene, although I do think it doesn't really progress the plot and felt like it was kind of put in there to add more time to what was going on. And it's just fine because we got more John's development. We got this interesting new character who's mysterious. And I'm going to be a thousand percent honest. I thought he was Moriarty. I didn't have any spoilers. I thought, oh, this is Moriarty. He's his arch nemesis. And the way they handled it at the end was really funny. That's one of the problems that I think people could have this with this episode. That even though when I first saw it, I enjoyed it. Once I went back and watched it again, I was like, this is pretty slow. It, it went a little slow. Like the scene with Mycroft went slow. And the end with when the mysteries figured out, that was really slow with Sherlock and uh, the cabbie. While it was slow, it still did a good job introducing everybody into this world, but I could see why people could complain. Then after the Mycroft scene, things start picking up. They go to the restaurant, which I think we could all agree is one of the funniest scenes in the entire show that it blows my mind how funny it was written and just uh it, it really gives us a sense of like Sherlock really does not care about that stuff but uh, John is just trying to figure things out and it's it's really well done I really like how the pursuit was done the chase was cool but this is where things start picking up with the story again and overall the story had some pretty good comic relief as well with um Anderson and um Sally Donovan used as comic relief but also understanding that Sherlock is this other being that people can really hate you know the shock blanket and the dinner scene it showed us that this is a serious show but it has a lot of really good incorporated humor i only think the big 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 weakness of this episode is how it compares to something that it did in the pilot after i watched the episode again i realized that sherlock is brilliant and he would have figured out the cabbie thing much sooner because in the original pilot he did figure it out very quickly he would have figured it out and that's a very unbelievable thing because logic was outweighed by the dramatic moment, and I think that's very ironic. And the ending of the story was perfect. I thought it was hilarious how the person we saw with John earlier was Mycroft, Sherlock's brother, um, that they had this little quip, which was funny. Um, and in the end, when it was like, uh, Dr. John Watson and Sherlock Holmes, and they're both walking off, and you have the Sherlock theme song, it was a very 
good way to end the story like this is the end of our story but we have so much more in store is that the Mycroft Sherlock quip felt a little like why would you start talking about that now it was clearly written for us to see that they were fighting it had nothing to do with what was going on it was felt like oh we're gonna randomly bring this up because we hate each other so if anything that's a problem but you can look past it for the characters I will be doing um, you know, how the characters are written, how they're incorporated into the story, what they're like, if they're likable, if they're not memorable. Okay, so let's talk about Sherlock first, since this is his show, and it is called Sherlock. One of the things that I love about Sherlock's character is that he always tries to impress. He does everything he can to prove that he's clever, and that he's smart, and he knows all these things, and he constantly needs this drive to keep on going, that he can do things that other people can't. But what's hilarious about this is that he's not used to being praised. So when he meets the character of John, you get an instant understanding that he has always been told to piss off, like he said. One of the scenes that always strikes me is when they're in the cab and he's deducing John's phone. Right after that's finished, if you look carefully, Sherlock looks very upset at himself or just very like oh great I screwed up but John immediately accepts him and you can kind of see this connection happen I like how this started off as just him trying to prove a point to everybody else um, by bringing John along but he ended up gaining a friend at the same time and that friendship is sealed when they go running through the city and um, John laughs at one of his jokes when he steals Lestrade's badge you can see on his face like I made a friend um, and one of my favorite things that they do is um, show that Sherlock is a socially impaired but very intelligent person with, by using Molly incorporated into the story but, uh, by making him say uh, the, the lipstick but then not understanding she's asking him out but saying how intelligent he is because it's his first deduction, the lipstick thing. Let's talk about John's character now. I always felt that he was more of the main character of this episode. He's the heart of this show, or at least the heart of this episode. We see the world through his eyes. When Sherlock leaves, we're still following John, just like in the books. One of the things that I thought was really interesting of Martin to do was always have this sense of insecurity. and You always get the sense of... He doesn't have a purpose, he doesn't have a place, and he doesn't know where to go or where to be. In a way, when Sherlock's not there, he starts to feel lost again. So when Sherlock leaves and he's left to talk to Sally, he says, I'm nobody. When John leaves his cane in the diner, and this is really, for me, it's very symbolic because that means it was a psychosomatic cane that he really was did think he had this injury, but with Sherlock, he has a purpose in the war zone again, just like what Mycroft said, you don't... Um, hate it, you miss it, which is, I think is one of the greatest moments. This is again shown afterward when another cane symbolism, when Sherlock leaves with the cabbie and he's about to leave with his cane, in a way kind of giving up on Sherlock. But then when the laptop beeps and he looks at the laptop and knows where Sherlock is, he immediately puts down the cane and runs. You know, it's kind of very obvious symbolism, but I live for that kind of stuff. By shooting the cabbie, he really learned his new purpose. Kind of like how his purpose in the, w in the war was to help people, his purpose now is helping Sherlock. Now with Lestrade, I didn't get really a purpose purpose with him in this episode other than that he was somebody who's known Sherlock for a really long time and he presents the cases to him I always felt like he always needed more screen time that's just me personally because I really like his character a lot I always felt that even though Stroud and Sherlock were never eye to eye that he he was always somebody there for Sherlock, that he really does want him to be a better person. And he has his own ways of connecting with Sherlock that isn't the same way as John's. Mrs. Hudson is very sweet, and she has great comic relief, and I just adore her. She's just a character you like. Sally and Anderson, I think, are there to remind you that the things that Sherlock does are weird, and people could really hate it. You, you, you side with Sherlock, so none of us like Sally and Anderson. She yes, thank you for your input. <laughs> Now, Mycroft, we get here, like I said earlier, we get more character development than actual plot in the episode, but I really like how Mycroft was played as this evil person, but he's really just his brother who is really concerned about him, so I think that's done really well. The character that's only in this episode, the cabbie, I think he is a really good villain for Sherlock, and I like his connection to Moriarty this early in the show. Um, he's smart, he uses the fact that Sherlock cannot ignore the game, to almost beat him if it wasn't for John, so I think the cab is actually a really intimidating villain. For the visuals, what I'll be doing is the directing style, like the way it looks, the way it's 
directed. Now I have to give huge props to Paul McGuigan. Um, he is the best director that this show has. I'm pretty sure he directed four out of the six, but I could be wrong. Just some amazing things with the visuals, with the zooms, and I don't know whose idea the texts on the screen was, but that's a great idea too. Quick fun fact. Um, these episodes were filmed out of order, so the study in pink was actually the last episode they filmed for season one. So they had more, like, technological advances. Specifically, when the camera moves up through the floor and then up to Jennifer Wilson's body. I love the text on the screen because it lets us feel that we are part of the show. I shouldn't say it's necessary, but it adds something to the show. It makes it its own. Particularly the deductions. When Sherlock is looking at Jennifer Wilson, we get different angles. When he looks at the bottom of the coat, there's wet on it and... All these little things, we feel like we're with Sherlock on the ride. I've mentioned this earlier before, but these visuals of how the camera angle does it, it helps us with that, and everything complements the scene that it's with. During the flashback, when Sherlock finds the pink suitcase, um, it's a little choppy, so it's not like the rest of the show. It's kind of like less frame rate, and I like that because it gives us a sense that this is a memory, that this is not entirely clear, but it's from the past. And of course at the end, where John goes into the wrong building, and he screams Sherlock, and the zoom from Sherlock and the cabbie into the other room where we realize he's in the wrong building is so tense. Well, a great way to back that up is with the music. The music is pretty self-explanatory. The music, because I think music is actually a very important part of the show. Now what I like about the music in this episode is that each character, or at least each moment, has their own theme. So one of the most symbolic things is John's theme, the four piano chords. It's interesting with John's theme because it always plays when he's left alone or he doesn't know what to do. And then with Sherlock, when he's introduced, we immediately get his Sherlock Holmes theme. The deduction music, the game is on music, which is a song that starts playing when he says, Mrs. Hudson, the game is on. And you can tell that it's very upbeat because it's the first moment where they're off to go solve a mystery. The music with the cabbie is very dark and mysterious, but I'll say it did get a little boring when that cabbie scene kind of ran a little too long. At one point that the deduction music and the, and the John Four Chords music gets mixed together, and I think this is a good way to symbolize that John is now a part of Sherlock's life, and this was during when John was looking for Sherlock, when Sherlock was about to take the pill. Overall, it was up to this episode to get me interested in the show, and it a thousand percent did so. Um, as soon as I watched it, I knew I was gonna watch the next episode the next day. I got hooked, I thought it was amazing, but here's the shocking thing about this. This isn't actually one of my favorite episodes. My final verdict is that this is my second least favorite episode of the show. Because Sherlock Holmes is a great man. And I think one day, if we're very, very lucky, it might even be a good one. This by no means means that I did not like it. This doesn't mean that it that I thought it was horrible. What it means is that the show progressively got better because what this was was an introduction and it did a good job introducing us but once the show finally finds its rhythm it produces some amazing quality stuff that I think surpasses this one because while I like this one it did have slow moments and it wasn't perfect and that one flaw I had where Sherlock definitely should have figured out the cabbie thing sooner it still kind of bugs me. Okay guys so what do you think? Is The Study in Pink your least favorite episode? Do you think it's the best episode? Do you agree with me that it was a little slow? Do you agree with me at all about the Sherlock figuring out it was the cabbie thing? Put your thoughts down below in the description so we can talk about it. Thank you for watching and bye!